Welcome back. This is the Municipal Man of Mystery with part three in our series in how to create beats for your beat buddy. Let's get into it. Let's start looking at how to create an intro fill. Let's begin by opening our beat buddy manager and we can take a look at that. There's a few things we want to think about before we get started. What can really save you a lot of time and a lot of frustration is really understanding what's going to happen uh, in the later stages because the planning you do now will indicate, you know, how that's going to turn out. Let's look at how the Beat Buddy moves through a song. Let's use a, a beat I made for Stray Cat Strut, which I like to use when I'm jamming and practicing guitar. So I will activate the simulator and you can watch as the parts of the song are highlighted. So it plays the intro, moves directly to the main beats. If I activate the pedal, it plays the first fill, back to the main beat. If I activate it again, plays the second fill, and if I hold the pedal down, it will play the transition and move to the next part of the song, and because there's a variation in the beat here during the solo, I want to make that a second part because it's going to play for several loops or several bars, and I'm going to hold the pedal down, it will move through the transition to the third part of the song. There's a slight variation in this beat that I want to take advantage of, so I made it as a fill, and if I activate the pedal, it will move to that at the appropriate time in the song. And then if I move through the transition, it will go back to the beginning of the song. And if I tap it twice, it'll go directly to the outro. Right, so knowing that will help you plan your songs. And remember, none of this is written in stone. If you get the beat onto your beat buddy and you find that the changes or the arrangement is not working, you can go back and fix it as you like it. Let's uh, get into creating the parts of this song. Let's start with the intro. Now, we're going to save ourselves a little time. We're just going to go back to our Beat Buddy um, Manager uh, folders. So we have our library, we have our song, uh, Thor. Here is the MIDI file we made in the last video. And if we just open with, uh, you can do a right click and choose the software that you are using. And it should open it up for you. If your software does not allow you to do that, you're going to have to open the software and then bring the file into the software. So here's the main beat. We're going to use this later because we're going to manipulate it for the other parts of the song. Let's move it down here for now. Uh, this will put it out of the way. And we're going to open up the editor just because we want to see the notes. Now to save ourselves a little bit of time, we're just going to borrow the notes we have already made uh, because we, we don't want to have to use the musical typing or pencil them in again. You can do that. I find it easier just to take these notes and uh, move them around as I want them. So in order to manipulate the notes, we want to get uh, more familiar with some of the keyboard commands that will help us do that. Uh, one of the keyboard commands you use a lot if you're using a DAW or a sequencer is to copy and paste, basically. So one way to do that is to hit Option on your keyboard and then click your mouse, and that will uh, grab the thing you are selecting and then you can drag a copy of it out and then if you release the mouse and then release option 
then you have a copy of that section. And that saves you a lot of time because if you have something that's repeating, like a loop, you can just copy it over and over again. Uh, this allows us to just take this, move it up to the front, because that's where the export feature is going to begin. And we're only going to export this section. And I'm going to uh, delete the parts of the fill that I don't want to use. All right. I'm just going to make a, a one bar fill to begin the song. So it's going to stop here on the first beat of the second bar. Now, here's something that the Beat Buddy does. If it plays a loop and there is something here, it will play that uh, in conjunction with the first beat of the next loop that you transition to. So if you want to add a cymbal crash on the one uh, in your transition, it will play that together as well. So that's an important feature to know because you want the cymbal crashes to indicate changes or to end a fill. Let's add a cymbal crash because that's where we want our fill to end. Now another way you can copy and paste notes is to first select a note and then hit Control C and that is the standard copy command for anything on your computer. And then what you're going to do is take the playhead, which is this um, bar here that runs along as you play, and you're going to locate it where you would like the new note to be. Okay, And then you're going to hit Control V, and that will paste it. And there it goes. Now, theoretically, I can take all of these and copy and paste anything anywhere that I want it to. So that's a real time saver. So now I've got a kick there. And I want to add a cymbal crash to this kick to end the fill. And I'm going to go back to my option click uh, function. So I hit option, I hit click with my mouse, and I'm going to drag my note off. And I'm going to find my crash. And there it is. And I'm going to release the mouse. Okay. So now I've got this kind of um, drum action. Okay. Now you can find the names of those notes over here. Okay. And here's our crash. Here's a right crash. It's one cymbal sound. We're going to use a left crash, another cymbal sound. Okay. You can see them all there. Okay, so um, another thing you want to think about for the intro is a count-in. The Beat Buddy has a count-in feature. I like to make my own count-ins, like with a hi-hat or a click or something. And that's what I'm going to do. And because I've already made this beat, um, I've got a count-in pre-existing. I'm going to quantize these because they're a little off. And you'll hear... If I hit return, uh, the playhead goes back to the beginning here. And if I hit space, it will play it for me. Right? So there's a little count in. Now we have to be creative with the fill that we want. I'm going to go with a simple kick flam kind of option. What I'm going to do is move these up like this. And let's see where I am here. That sounds good. I don't want this count in here. I don't want that hi-hat there, so I'm going to delete them. I want this kick to be a little stronger because it's an intro. We're going to look at velocity a little later, but just as an introduction, velocity is basically how hard you're hitting the part of the drum. So if you want it to be really strong and uh, pronounced, uh, you can up the velocity. Okay, so now my kick is going to be really strong. Um, let me delete these because I don't want these counting anymore. I do want this kick though. Uh, let's make that the same as the other kick. Okay. I'm going to make a flam because uh, I like the way that sounds. What I'm going to do is just do an option drag with this. So I hit option. Okay. So now I've got two drum hits. And let's hear how that sounds. 
All right, um, let's do that again. So I'm going to take these. I'm going to do an option drag. That's going to take both of the notes. I'm going to put it in the appropriate spot. Let's see if that sounds good. Let's make a third slam over here. Just for fun. Hey, that's an awesome intro fill, I think. Simple, but works. Now we have our introductory fill that it's going to open the song for us. So now we want to uh, move this into the Beat Buddy Manager and just see how it's sounding. We can leave this tail on there. The Beat Buddy won't continue playing it if there are no notes ahead of it. You'll notice I have two MIDI selections here. If you're exporting it from your software, just make sure that only one of them is highlighted and make sure that it is up on the first beat of the track that you have. And you can just export this one selection here. All right, so let's export this MIDI selection to the Beat Buddy Manager, and we're gonna save it in our song file. And we're gonna to go to export. And again, remember it's export selection as MIDI file. So we're gonna go back to our Beat Buddy Manager uh, folders. We go to the library, songs, Thor. Okay. And we wanna give this a unique name so we can identify it. Uh, we're gonna call this Thor intro because that's what it is and hit save. Okay. Well, let's go to our finder and see where it is. There it is. So we have now two parts of our song, Thor intro and Thor main. Let's go to our Beat Buddy manager. And now what we want to do is uh, open that intro fill in the intro panel, a part of the song. So we click on the white square it will bring us back to the folder we were using before, hopefully. If it doesn't, you have to go in and find it. And we're gonna hit uh, Thor intro, hit open, and there we go. So now we have two parts of the song populated. Let's test it. We can test the uh, loop just by clicking this play icon here. And then as we looked at last time, you can actually simulate the actions of the pedal. So we'll hit the pedal and it should play the intro loop and then go directly to the main loop. Oh, gotta save it first. Hit stop. Let's leave part three uh, at this point. And we'll continue in part four and look at how to make some drum fills and fill in this part of our song. I hope you're not getting overwhelmed by all the details. Uh, depending on your background with computers, this will be more intuitive for some and others. There's a bit of a learning curve, but don't get discouraged. It does take time to be able to do this skillfully and do it as quickly and efficiently as possible. But the better you get at it, the more nuanced your beats will be and the more satisfying your accomplishments will be. So uh, we'll see you next time. Stay tuned for part four and keep working at it and be prepared to spend some time with it.